Hello friends and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. In this video, we are going to learn about I/O redirection and its three standard files in Linux. So, let's get started. The shell associates three files with the terminal. Two for the display and one for the keyboard. We see command output and error messages on the display and we provide command input through the keyboard. Every program you run from the shell opens three files standard input, standard output and standard error. The files provide the primary means of communication between the programs and exist for as long as the process runs. The standard input file provides a way to send data to a process. As a default, standard input is read from the terminal keyboard. The standard output provides a mean for the program to output data. As a default, the standard output goes to the terminal display screen. Standard error The file or stream representing error messages that originate from the command or shell. This is also connected to the display. Every command will always find these files open and available. The files are closed when the command completes execution. Now let's learn about redirection. Redirection is a feature in Linux such that when executing a command, you can change the standard input or output devices. The basic workflow of any Linux command is that it takes an input and gives an output. The standard input device is the keyboard. The standard output device is the screen. And with redirection, the above standard input and outputs can be changed. Most command line programs that display the results do so by sending the results to a facility called standard output. By default, standard output directs its content to the display. To redirect standard output to a file, the greater than character is used. And for appending to the existing contents, a double greater than symbol is used. Many commands can accept input from a facility called standard input. By default, standard input gets its content from the keyboard. But like standard output, it can be redirected. To redirect standard input from a file instead of the keyboard, the less than character is used. Now let's look at them, each of them in detail. The greater than symbol is used for output redirection. In this example, the output of ls command will go into file 2. And if you do not want a file to be overwritten but want to add more content to an existing file, then you should use a double greater than symbol. By default, if you do not use the double greater than symbol, the old version will be overwritten if, the, if there is already an existing file. Let's try this on a system. So let me type an ls greater than file2. Now let's look at the content of file2. You can see the output of ls has gone to file2. Let's verify it by doing an ls again. And you can see that the same output has gone to this file2 instead of directly getting displayed on the terminal with the help of greater than output redirection. Next, let's come to redirecting input. To redirect standard input from file instead of the keyboard, the less than character is used. It instructs the shell to read input from a file called file1 in this example instead of the keyboard. Let's look at an example. 
very good example of using the input redirection is when using the tr command which we learned in a previous video in this series. So I have a file which has content as foo and a cat file gives the content of this file. Now let me do a tr space o space b followed by a file and hit enter. It was an attempt to replace o with b in this file and you can see that an error is thrown here. Now to get this working we need input redirection. So the command would be tr space o space b and a less than symbol which is the input redirection symbol followed by the file name. And you can see that it worked. So the o is replaced by b. Many commands like cat are capable of taking a file name as input and then opening the file and doing their thing on it. That's why cat space file works. Other programs however don't have any knowledge of what files are or how to use them. All they know about is input streams. And one such example was the tr command. Now let's come to error redirection. In Linux, every file has an associated number called the file descriptor. Your screen also has a file descriptor. When a program is executed, the output is sent to the file descriptor of the screen and you see output on your mon monitor. If the output is sent to file descriptor of the printer, the program output would have been printed. A file descriptor is associated with each of the files. Error redirection is routing the errors to a file other than the screen. Now let's see that why exactly do we need error redirection. While executing shell scripts or certain commands, you often do not want error messages cluttering up the normal program output on your terminal screen. The solution is to redirect the error messages to a file. And here comes the use of error description. In this example, we are executing a program named file. The file descriptor for standard error is 2. Using 2 greater than, we redirect the error output to a file named error file. Thus, the terminal output is not cluttered with error and all the errors would go into this errors file. Let's understand this more clearly in a system with the help of an example. Now let me type a wrong command intentionally. Let's say instead of echo high, I'll type rcho high and hit enter. Now you can see that the error message is displayed on the terminal. If I do not want the error message to get displayed on the terminal, what I can do is simply use a rcho space high space the error file descriptor and the error file and hit enter. You can see that our terminal is now clean and the error is now thrown in this file called error file. And this is the entire the whole use of error redirection. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.